Hello there, fellow maker. Welcome to our little studio here. And uh, we've had inscription on our mind. <laughs> yes. We did this uh, squirrel bottle, emergency squirrel bottle, uh, a while back. And since then, the artist who did the 3D models for inscription released files for all the totems. Yes, his name is David Hageman. And thank you so much, David, for doing that. It's, I think, the first time I've seen a 3D artist for a video game uh, simplify their models and put them up on Thingiverse. So if you know of anyone else who does that, uh, let me know because that's the best way to get a completely accurate model that matches uh, what you want to make. Yeah, it takes all the hard work out. All we had to do was get those files and 3D print them, which was a great excuse to bust out our new uh, AnyCubic printer, the Photon Mono X again. Uh, and you printed these in a clear resin. Yes, I did uh, because in the game, these animal totems, there's different heads of the different animals, and then there's this one base, so you can mix and match them. But the eyes glow, and there's a little symbol on the stomach that glows, too. The Care Bear Stare. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to make them glow, and we'll see how that works. Yeah, so we should be able to put some LEDs in here and keep the light up areas uh, from being painted in some way. We'll mask them in some way. Uh, and then that light will come out of just those areas while the rest of it will be painted. We haven't done it yet. We'll see how it goes, but confidence is at an all time high. I wanna talk a little bit about how I got these printed because I did make some modifications. I'll link David's models down below from Thingiverse. Uh, his username there is Division3D. And I chose the squirrel totem to make, and I could always make another head later, but since I have the squirrel bottle, I figured the squirrel totem would be perfect for that. There are a couple different STLs to download. I chose the full totem body, the base screw, and the stone little belly plate, and also the full squirrel head, not the one that's all sliced up. I wanna print it all in one piece. I hollowed out the head and the body in mesh mixer and the hollow millimeter I used was four millimeters and that was a good thickness to not have the thin walls go up into the eyes or up into the hands. I just wanted to do a quick like shell type thing and mesh mixer was a great way to do that. And while I was there, I used some primitive geometries to cut out the butt of the base. Uh, hopefully we can jam some electronics in there. And I also cut a hole through the screw attachment where we might be able to feed a LED up into. To make our printing a little bit more streamlined with that resin printer, we picked up a flexible build plate for it and I cannot recommend this enough. It makes it so much easier and gentler to take resin prints off of that build plate. It's just a steel sheet that's magneted to the build plate there and uh, the print gets um, attached to it while it's printing and then when it's all done, you can just pop it off <laughs> Give it a little flex and it'll fall right off into the vat of isopropyl alcohol that we use to wash off the resin prints. And I had to dramatically release it above the alcohol so it splashed a little bit, yes. but you can, you know, dunk it before, sure. before you remove it if you want. <laughs> and then that plate can get thrown in there and washed as well. Uh, and it comes out uh, nice and clean and you just wipe it off and you're ready to go again. So much easier. I uh, was chipping the pieces off the previous build plate that was not flexible. So now it's so much easier. Mm -hmm. I use Soraya Tech Blue Clear version two, which is a clear resin that's pretty impact resistant, a lot less brittle than the previous resin we were using. The one issue I had was the resin didn't want to come out of the one tiny hole I added to the squirrel head. So Bill uh, drilled in some more drainage holes for me. So I've learned in the future to model in some more holes to make sure that the resin can get out and that the isopropyl alcohol can get in and clean the whole area. And then get back out again. Yes. <laughs> Unless you want, you know, this water and stuff sloshing around inside your model. In the game, the little belly plate has different symbols on it for the different effects that the different abilities in the game give you. And I went with the triple blood, which is like getting extra mana to use, which is always fun. I took the triple blood image from the game and brought that into Inkscape. And I just traced around that real simple. And then I imported that SVG into Tinkercad which is just browser based. So it's just a, a way to mess with 3D models in a browser way. I didn't even have to download anything. So I imported the plate and my little SVG and extruded that right onto the base. And the indented parts are what's gonna glow. The rest of it, I guess I'll paint or something to diffuse the light. And hopefully that'll work. But I think it turned out really well. It looks fantastic. Since I printed all of these straight on the build plate, I wanted as few supports as possible. 
there is a little bit of like a, a lip, an elephant's foot around the bottom that we're going to need to trim off because these pieces don't quite fit together anymore. And I do have some of the support bases on here that need to be removed. And also in the 3D model, there's this little like kangaroo pouch. And I didn't even really think about it when I was shelling this, but now there's this like pouch kind of in the way of the electronics. So I think I'm just going to trim all that off. <laughs> I, what I should have done in the 3D space was just snip that off like I did with a hole in the bottom. So that's what we're going to get rid of. That's the extra foot that was kind of added because we printed that right on the build plate. It was worth it. Look, the bottom is all nice and flat. Sands really well. Giving him a little, a little pedicure. I made a boo-boo. Uh-oh. <laughs> I got aggressive with my trimming and one of the toes broke off and went flying at Bill where it promptly disappeared. Except since this is UV resin and this is a UV flashlight, Bill took this flashlight, searched around in the ground, found the part. Wow, look at it glowing. Yay. And we can reattach it. I have a little bamboo skewer. And have a little bit of this same kind of resin we used to print on there. And that's going to be our adhesive. I'm just going to jam this little piece in there. And it's not really sticky, surprisingly. So I just kind of have to place it. And then with the magic of UV curing, Just like that. Wow, that took seconds. <laughs> that's so cool. Oh yeah, that's that's probably a great bond too. You didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> the toe is all nice in place now. Now it's time to get rid of this little center pouch. This feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> Making some great progress here. Brent removed this little pouch thing in there, which will give us a ton more room. We have some electronics left to go in there, like this battery case. That'll have to fit and I'll have plenty of room. We also have to hide a couple of LEDs there. So that should be pretty well set. Uh, this here, this is supposed to glue in here. And then the screw is supposed to be able to accept the squirrel head but I cannot for the life of me get it to go down any further than that. I've tried tweaking this uh, and it's, it's just not even close. So we're going to omit that part. This part will become permanent. Oh, it looks so good. Doesn't it? What a cool sculpt. It's really cool. And this will go in there. <laughs> so I think we're about ready to assemble all of this and prime it uh, and also install the electronics. I think the electronics will go in before we do any painting. Yeah. Uh, they'll all be accessed from the bottom here and that part won't be painted. So let's uh, let's put some lights in this fella. Yes. I've wired up some LEDs. These are just a warm white LED. They'll run off of three volts. So I've got two AA batteries here ready to go or AAA batteries. Uh, these will, I'm just going to temporarily attach them. These are really cool. These are called uh, lock, no. Lever nuts? Lever nuts. That's, that's what they are. I just temporarily hold these together so that we can test the circuit. And we can also test the placement. Uh, we're, we're gonna have to glue the LEDs in here and we wanna make sure they're in a spot where they're shining as much light on the eyes as possible. We want it to look like the eyes are glowing. So let's hook these up. They should light up. Ta-da! Nice! And then these will go up in there. Yay. So everything will be painted except for the eyes so that they will be nice and glowy. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is figure out kind of roughly where these should go to make sure we get light on there and then we're going to hot glue them. All right, I'm going to put a little hot glue on here and then snake it in and try and stick it on the eye. That's the plan. In you go. And stick. <laughs> That's so neat. And then just hold it for a while. Got these LEDs installed in the face. Uh, and I've got a couple more that are going to go in the belly. Actually sanded the ends of these flat so they have uh, enough room to fit. And they're going to go right in like that. Got 
got our LEDs installed, now it's time to put the whole thing together. I like when the many pieces become fewer pieces. It's always fun. Oh yeah. All right, epoxy's mixed up. We got a couple minutes of work here. We've sanded all these surfaces so the epoxy has something to bite onto. And like that. Cool. My tweezers, got one wire. And the other one. You can solder all this out of there and then stuff it in. This looks like a fancy like mixed drink thing. <laughs> glue everywhere. <laughs> I mixed a bunch of epoxy, so I might as well glue this part on too. Hurry before it cures. This stuff is fast. And I guess you just get to hold it there. A human clamp. I am uh, connecting everything here. I've got a battery, a switch, and my lights. Uh, actually, we did uh, the Unkempt Herald from Borderlands as a, uh, a lighting project a while ago. So if you really want to deep dive into lighting, this kind of simple lighting, that's the thing to go check out. I'm just connecting everything right now. Put a little heat shrink tubing over all of that mess. Beautiful. Nice. One more test. Yep, everything still lights up. Great. That's always a great sign. Uh, and then this switch needs to get maneuvered in there. This switch is from a toy. I don't remember which one, but <laughs> Whenever I take apart a toy, I take all the useful stuff like switches and battery holders. There we go. Yay! <laughs> now I just have to stuff all of these loose wires in there. Where they will live forever. <laughs> this isn't really elegant, let's say, but it works. Well, I wasn't really planning how I was going to do the lighting when I was printing it. Right. And the switch goes in. There, it all fits. Oh, that looks so good. Yeah. So we'll paint everything except for the eyes and the belly, and that's where the light will come out. So we've got to mask those spots. Yeah, we do. And then we're going to do some priming. So we're going to hit this whole thing with a filler primer before we do our finishing work. But I don't want any paint on the eyes or in the belly. So I'm going to mask it using toothpaste. Um, I've used this for paint chipping effects in the past and it works really well. If I had some latex, I would use that, but it turns out I'm all out. Uh, latex is great because it dries and you can peel it off afterwards. The toothpaste doesn't dry but it's very easy to wash off later. I'm just kind of gobbing this on there, making sure it is gonna cover the things we want to remain paint free. You know, just jamming a bunch of toothpaste in your eye. No, <laughs> that sounds awful. This, I'm, there's no way I'm gonna get that perfect. So I'll just make sure I fill in the low spot and then we'll just wipe off the high spot. That should do it. I think we can hit those with some primer. Awesome. Brush liquor. Mmm. It's so minty. <laughs> it's how prop makers brush their teeth. This is the primer that we're going to put on here. This is an automotive filler primer. Filler primer has more body to it, so if you're spraying it on a, a 3D print, it's going to fill in all the fine detail. That's those fine layer lines. It's really good for your first uh, shot of priming when you're uh, finishing a 3D print. Let's go do that. It's raining in Seattle. Go figure. Who'd have thought? Oh man, that's starting to look like stone. I 
know if you guys can hear the rain coming down, but it's pretty intense. Yeah, let's head inside before we uh, recreate water <laughs> world. Oh God, <laughs> deeper than I thought. Oh, uh, oh, that's gonna be so soggy. Oh no. It is a new day and the primer is dry. And I love how I can now see all of the details in this sculpt. So cool. I can also see all of the places I need to sand. I didn't even notice that I had some little support nubbins left over under the mouth there. And then there are some flatter areas that have that kind of topological look of layers on a resin printer. Probably, oh, oh I touched the eye. Oh. oh. <laughs> we were expecting to have to redo that probably anyway. I've got some 220 here. This stuff sands really easily. Yeah, it does. Much better, little cute mouth. Someone messed up the toothpaste on the eyes. <laughs> so it has to be reapplied. Could have been anyone. We'll do one more layer of primer before we start painting this thing. Looking good. And I didn't have to stand in the lake to do it. <laughs> it's so much better today. All right, some time has passed. We primed this and then we hit it with a base coat of gray. I know, thrilling footage, right? Uh, so everything is good to go so we can start painting the final bit of paint on there. And what we're going for is a little something like this. This is the Dragonstone from Skyrim. Brittany painted this a while back. Uh, all with just acrylic paints. We want it to look nice and mottled like stone. The actual totem in the game, it's not clear if it's wood or stone. I believe even the artist who made it said it's either wood or stone. So we've decided to make it look like stone. We thought that would look pretty cool. Uh, the first thing we want to do though is take care of the toothpaste on the eyes and on the, the symbol on the belly there. We've got to get that out and hopefully that means we'll be left with some spots with no paint where the light can shine out. So this part here, you can see is still pliable because of the, the paint on the outside is dry, but the, the uh, toothpaste oh, below is... You're poking at it with a knife that looks so wrong. <laughs> yeah. So we can just go in here and scrape most of this away. And I want to be careful around, like, around the lid there because we don't want to pull the lid paint off. We can go in and touch that up with a brush later. At least we're getting the, the bulk of this stuff off. Again, if we had a latex, this would be, this would like come off, it would be dry, but it would peel off real nicely. So if you have latex for this, I recommend using that. Got this little, tiny little makeup brush to get in between the cracks there and try and pull away when I can. Uh, but I also have just a normal paintbrush and some water and I can go in and scrub it a bit. That's why it's getting all frothy because of that toothpaste. Does it still smell minty? <laughs> it's a combination of mint and spray paint. Mm. But we should be able to do this and then rinse it off. It should get rid of all the rest of that toothpaste. Get your face under there. Oh! <laughs> this video is weird. <laughs> but also, Inscription is a weird game. It's a very weird game. Well, it looks great. Actually, we can turn the light on. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, let's get your wet finger in there. Yep. Hey, all right. Oh, it worked. Yeah, we can see some light leaks, but when we paint it, we'll fix that up. But the, that look, <laughs> looks pretty great. <laughs> now that the squirrel totem's all dried off, the first thing I think we're gonna do is try and tame all the light leaks that we have. There's a little bit of light leaking around the symbol here where the spray paint couldn't really work down into the crevices. So I'll take some darker gray and jam it down in there. <laughs> oh, that's looking way better already. I don't remember the class we took in college in art school where we learned to, to jam it down in there. <laughs> it's the kind of education you only get from YouTube. <laughs> It's for your own good. Your mouth's leaking light, buddy. There's a little bit of cleanup around the eyes. That's looking really neat. Here, I give him some nice eyeliner. 
And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you can see the layer lines. And I think that looks really neat, like these weird little circles. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see you. Now I'm just gonna kind of stipple on some different browns and grays, start with like a lighter brown. And I have this really old crummy sponge. Uh, the crummier the better. <laughs> and you can either like dip the sponge in the paint or brush it right on there and then just kind of stipple it around. And the more random, the better. When it dries, it'll be pretty translucent, even if it's like a heavy body paint, if you put on a light layer. So the more layers, the better, the more variation, the better, the more uneven. Gotta get that butt there. Mm -hmm. And I'll just do this for a while. Yeah. Hopefully this is dry enough to do a dark wash. I need to get down into all the crevices. So I have a damp mop brush. Any kind of like brush that can really stipple down into the crevices would work. I have like some burnt umber and some black. And I'm just gonna go down in the crevices Everything but the eyes and the little symbol down here, I'll try and avoid that. And then while that's still wet, I'll just wipe it off and, oh, look at that. Yes. Yeah, blotting is a little bit better than scrubbing. It keeps more of the paint on there. Oh, it looks so good. I like him. Me too. Look at it. Oh, I'm looking at it. <laughs> I think I need some highlights and then that might be it for the paint job. For the highlights, same kind of paint, just got some lighter grayish brown on there. And I'll try and clean off my brush. There was a lot of paint on there, oh goodness. Uh, get a lot of it off my brush and just lightly, lightly kiss. The parts that would be touched the most, that would get like, like buffed and highlighted. Sometimes you wanna leave like little streaky brush strokes, like if it's supposed to look like scratched metal paint kind of thing. But for this, I just want it to be like a little more, a little more subtle. Oh, look at that. Look at this guy. Look at us. Kind of reminds me of the squirrel that's been stealing all our suet. <laughs> oh, jeez. Just let it go, buddy. It's mine. <laughs> He's just so proud. No, oh, he dropped it. I oh, God, I need it. it. He's been so greedy. But as my grandma would say, that squirrel can't go to the grocery store. And then she would give it a peanut butter sandwich. I think that'll do it for the paint. I think that looks great. And for the eyes, they do glow still. <laughs> oh, that looks rad. Uh, but we figured we should try and make them a little more shiny by adding more of the clear resin on top. There's a little bit of the resin in this cup here. And just taking a brush, a tiny amount, I'm going to try to only get it on the eye. We'll see how well this goes. I mean, that already looks pretty darn good. What do you think, Bill? I think it looks so good. <laughs> Compared to that one? Mm-hmm. Or that one. I'll put the uncured resin off to the side and blast this with UV light. Whoa. Let's see if that's cured. <laughs> Oh, that's red. That's so cool. Nice. I think the glossy eyes made a huge difference. Looks super red. It really does. But there's one more thing we want to do. We have to upgrade our squirrel cards. So in the game, when you get a totem, the cards that it represents, in this case, the squirrel, get a little glowing uh, logo on them. It's like a stamp. Right. Uh, so I made a stamp. So I cut this out of EVA foam over on the laser cutter. This is the logo that it'll be getting. And we're gonna try and make a glowing paint, sort of, to stamp on it. All right, I'm just gonna cut the stamp out of the large piece of foam using a knife that I got over at punishprops.com. So sharp. And so can you. And this will make us a little stamp here. 
So that'll get stamped on the card. But for the paint... Oh, did I reverse it? I don't know if I reversed it or not. Nope. Oh. And now I will cut out the new one I just cut on the laser that is facing the correct direction. Uh, when you're making a stamp, you have to reverse whatever you're, you're cutting out. This is not the first time that either of us has made this mistake. <laughs> it's really important if you have text that needs to be read. All right, let's, uh, we're gonna mix up some paint and give this a little test. To make my glowing paint, I've got clear paint and glow powder. So you're probably not gonna see very much on the card, but when you hit it with a UV light or put it in a dark room, it should glow. A little bit of paint, a little bit of glow powder, and I'm just guessing on the amounts here. Wow, yeah, that's what we want right there. You guys just brush it on here. Brush some paint on and then stamp it. I've got a piece of the same kind of paper waiting. Where did it go? Yeah. Uh, we definitely didn't get the detail. Let's see a second stamp. Yeah, we're not, we're losing the, the fine edges here. The stamp is not, not super high fidelity. Here's what we have. Oh, it's almost like a CSI thing. <laughs> yeah. I've decided to use a stencil instead of a stamp. I think it's gonna be a little more controlled, a little more clean that way. Britt drew this up in Inkscape and then I used our vinyl cutter to cut the stencil vinyl. Whoop. And now I'm weeding away the negative space. This is where I want it to be painted. Ooh. Here you. There's our stencil. Got some transfer vinyl here. All right. I can take the whole thing off. That's how confident Bill is. He's going straight to a car. Straight to the squirrel. And it can be at a jaunty angle. Yeah. There we go. And I'm not going to push it down very hard because I'm sure it'll take some of the ink off when we <laughs> remove it. Okay, I have to push down a little harder than that. Stay down, you. There we go. You know what? It has definitely taken the ink off. Ah, One card down, we have two more. <laughs> well, we should clear coat one. it first. Clear coat the card? Mm-hmm. All right. But let's, let's do the, um, Let's do the, the paint here and see how it looks. Because this may is maybe a total flop anyway. Is it the same mixture? Same mixture. It's always hard to tell where you've painted with clear paint. Pew! I mean, the card has a really nice weathered look to it. It does. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty cool. Uh, that looks just like the game, actually. Yeah, that's really awesome. <laughs> that's what we're going for. Cool. All right, so we will spray a clear coat on this squirrel. Crystal clear to seal our squirrel. There we go, that crystal clear spray paint protected our card. Very nice. Now we know to protect the laser prints with crystal clear. Cool. Oh, look at that! <laughs> like in the game, it has that modeled stamp look. In yeah, that, that looks cool. That's what we were going for right there. That's cool. That makes me happy. All right, we'll let that dry and then we'll be all done. That. It's going to wrap it up, and that was an awful lot of fun. I love this little card thing. I love our totem. It's so neat to have one of these from the game. I love how it turned out. This is going to be a great addition to our collection, including 
our uh, squirrel in a bottle. If you missed that video, go check that out. If you love this vibe, then go check out Inscription. Uh, it's not sponsored or anything. We just think it's a really rad game. We had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, and I can't wait, yes, to display our, our squirrel totem holding his squirrel cards. Look at him. <laughs> There we go. Thanks so much for hanging out with us in the shop today. It was an awful lot of fun. And thank you especially to the members of our Extra Credit Club. They're the lifeblood of this channel, really, of our, of our business. Uh, if you want to join and get access to extra content every week, we do a vlog every single week, uh, join over on Patreon or right here on YouTube. Super simple, super cheap, and it means the world to us. It really does. And one of the current things we're working on behind the scenes is Bill has a new CNC. I do have a new CNC machine. It'll be in, a, in some future projects. Uh, but if you want to see what I've been up to with that machine up till now, and I've been talking about it in those vlogs. So you can join and check it out. Uh, that'll do it. Thanks for watching again and happy crafting. All right. Care Bear Stare! <laughs> Mike, we do a little Care Bear Stare thing? Before yeah. Before we turn it off? Care, Care Bear, Bear Stare! stare! <laughs> 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 Did you show your belly? <laughs> you blinded everyone. <laughs> you can set the white balance in your camera to that.